توکل علی و نعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا و من سیعات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له و من يدل فلا هادي له اما بعد Deciding today whether to discuss Laylatul Qadr, which is a few days away inshallah, or to continue on our theme of understanding the Qur'an in the month of Ramadan. And I decided to combine the two topics. So what we're going to do today inshallah is a brief tafsir of Surah Al-Qadr. So on one hand we continue the theme of discussing the meanings of the Qur'an and diving deeper into the Qur'an. On the other hand we also learn about the virtues of Laylatul Qadr through this discussion. Because Laylatul Qadr is not just something that is mentioned in our ahadith, but it is directly mentioned by this name in the Quran. In a surah that all of us should be familiar with and that the majority of us should have memorized, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises this night and discusses its virtues in a few short verses. So what I'm going to discuss inshallah is a very very brief tafsir of the surah. And obviously with any surah, we cannot do justice to its tafsir in 20 minutes. But nonetheless, we can take some benefits from the surah in these few minutes. Surah Al-Qadr is one of those few surahs in the Quran about which the ulama have a difference of opinion whether it was revealed in Makkah or Medina. The majority of the surahs of the Quran, we can very neatly place it that this was a Makkan surah or this was a Medinan surah. But there are a few surahs where the ulama have a difference of opinion. And it's not clear when it was revealed. Surah Al-Qadr is one of those surahs. Why? On one hand, it is a very short, very powerful surah. And this is a quality of a Makkan surah. On the other hand, it is directly linked to the topic of Ramadan and spending Ramadan in worship. And we know that the acts of worship related to Ramadan were only revealed in the early Medinan period, in the second year after Hijrah. So, is this a Makkan surah or Medinan surah? The reality is we may never know. Every scholar will have his own opinion. Some ulama will say this is Makkan, some will say it is Medinan. My opinion is that this is a Medinan surah. Why? Because it was in the second year of Hijrah that Ramadan, the fasting of Ramadan was revealed. It was in that year that we were commanded to fast the month of Ramadan, we were encouraged to start praying the night of Ramadan, and with that comes also the topic of Layatul Qadr. It would not make sense <clears throat> that the virtues of Layatul Qadr would be revealed in Makkah when the month of Ramadan is not a month of fasting yet. Right? This, this comes after the month of fasting, not before it. That is why I believe that this was revealed in Medina, and Allah knows best. So this surah begins with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stating, Inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr That we revealed it in Laylatul Qadr And there is no difference of opinion what it is referring to in this verse The Quran We revealed the Quran in Laylatul Qadr And this links up very beautifully to a verse in the very beginning of the Quran Look at this, a verse in the very beginning of the Quran And a verse at the very end of the Quran Which both were perhaps revealed at the same time in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse 185, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shahru Ramadan al unzila fihi al-Qur'an. The month of Ramadan in which Allah revealed the Qur'an. And then now at the end of the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we reveal the Qur'an in Layl Laylatul Qadr. Putting these two verses together, we can say for sure Laylatul Qadr is in the month of Ramadan. Right? Laylatul Qadr is in the month of Ramadan. Why do we need to say this? We know that the month, that Laylatul Qadr, there are many differences of opinion of when it is. Most of us are familiar with the opinion of the 27th night. Or we are familiar with the opinion of the odd nights in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. But there are other opinions as well. There are some who even believed that Laylatul Qadr was outside of Ramadan. And those opinions, they died out over time because they seem to contradict the Quran. That is, the evidence is very strongly in favor of Laylatul Qadr being in Ramadan why? Because Allah says He revealed the Qur'an in Ramadan and Allah says He revealed the Qur'an on Laylatul Qadr. Therefore, Laylatul Qadr is in Ramadan. A benefit that we can take from this verse, the fact that the Qur'an in the very beginning tells us that it was revealed in the month of Ramadan and in the very end it tells us again it was revealed on Laylatul Qadr. Again, this is a reminder to us all to spend the month of Ramadan with the Qur'an. To spend it studying the Qur'an, learning about the Qur'an, benefiting from the Qur'an. This is the month of the Qur'an. 
Now, one of the issues which the ulama have a difference of opinion about regarding the surah is what exactly is meant by the Qur'an being revealed on Laylatul Qadr. Because we know the Qur'an was revealed over a period of 23 years. So what is meant by Laylatul Qadr? And there are two opinions, and I'm of the view that both opinions are correct because they do not contradict each other. They complement each other. Opinion number one, that Allah sent this Qur'an to Jibreel in the first heaven on Laylatul Qadr. And opinion number two, that Allah revealed the first five verses of Surah Alaq to the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ in the cave on Layatul Qadr. And both opinions can be true. There's no contradiction here. It's possible that both of those things happened on Layatul Qadr. So the first virtue of Layatul Qadr, which we can extract from the Surah, is that it is the night when the revelation of the Qur'an began. It is directly related to the Qur'an. And so it is a blessed night. And in another surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls it Laylatul Mubarakah, the blessed night, the night of Barakah. So from that surah, we get another virtue of Laylatul Qadr, that there is Barakah in this night. And this is one of the signs of Laylatul Qadr. When you experience a high level of Barakah on just one night in Ramadan, it is highly possible that that was the night of Laylatul Qadr. So moving on to the next part of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna anzalna hu fi laylatul qadr wa ma adraka ma laylatul ma laylatul qadr. They ask you, uh, it was revealed on laylatul qadr, wa ma adraka ma laylatul How would you explain what is laylatul qadr? So this is a type of rhetorical question that comes throughout the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions something and then He asks you, how do I explain what this thing is to you? And this type of question, the purpose of it in the Qur'an is to draw our attention to what is said next. Right? So there are many uh, verses like this, like Al-Qari'ah, Mal-Qari'ah. Right? Al-Qari'ah, what is Al-Qari'ah? Right? So, Inna anzalnahu fi laytul qadr wa ma adraka ma laytul qadr. How would I explain to you what is laytul qadr? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is immediately telling us that this night is so special that explaining it to each other is going to be difficult. And even the name itself, Laylatul Qadr, what does it mean? Even here there are differences of opinion. Because the word Qadr means so many things. But there are two meanings that are most probably the strongest. Number one, it is the majestic night. It is a powerful night. It is a night of awe. It is a night that is special. Because one of the meanings of Qadr is something powerful, something majestic, something special. And so this is probably one meaning of Laylatul Qadr, it is a special night. The other meaning of Laylatul Qadr is the, the more common usage of the word Qadr, the night of destiny. Because this is the night when our destiny is revealed for the next year. And that brings us to the topic of destiny. And the, the topic of destiny is a very complicated theological issue that we cannot explain in the Jummah Khutbah. Perhaps one day we will try, but we won't be able to do justice to it today. And this is a question that lots of young people ask about. I think almost this is probably like on the top three most common questions young people ask about. What is Qadr and how do I understand it? How do we understand this idea that Allah knows everything, Allah controls everything, and Allah already knows who's going to Jannah and who's going to Jahannam? How do we understand this topic and how do we, how do we reconcile that with the idea of free will? It's a very complicated topic, but there is an answer, and inshallah we will address it in a later khutbah in more details. But just to put it in with this topic of Layatul Qadr, Allah's Qadr is of two levels, right? There is the knowledge of Allah. Allah already knows everything that's going to happen to the Day of Judgment. And then there is what Allah tells the angels. So Allah will tell the angels on Laylatul Qadr for the next year who is going to pass away, who is going to be born, who is going to get wealthy, who is going to get poor. All of that is laid out annually to the angels. But that is a lower level of Qadr. So when the Hadith says that Dua can change Qadr, it's not talking about changing the knowledge of Allah. Allah's knowledge is perfect and infinite. It cannot change. It's talking about changing what is with the angels. That Allah may have written to, uh, to the, with the angels that so-and-so is going to get poor this year. But that person spends little Qadr in dua asking Allah for wealth. And so Allah tells the angels, no, this person is going to get wealthy this year. That doesn't change the knowledge of Allah. Allah already knew that that person is going to make the dua and that change is going to take place. Right? But Allah allows it to happen in this way so we have some free will. And even free will itself is some, just a gift from Allah which, which we have in very limited capacity. So Allah says, what will explain to you what is Laylatul Qadr? 
Laylatul Qadr khairun min alfi shahr. The night of Qadr is better than a thousand months. The biggest virtue of Laylatul Qadr, the one that makes all of us spend this night in ibadah, is that it is better than a thousand months of worship. A thousand months, 83 years. Now there is a story behind why the surah was revealed and why this virtuous and blessed night was revealed. And that story goes that in the people of the past used to live much longer than us. And so the Prophet used to tell the Sahaba about people of the past who spent like a hundred years in jihad or spent a hundred years worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Sahaba would say, how are we ever going to catch up with that? We only live for 40, 50, 60 years. How are we going to catch up with someone who spent a hundred years serving Allah's deen? And so Allah gave us an opportunity to catch up with them multiple times over. He gave us Laylatul Qadr. So we don't live in this world that long. But if you spend Laylatul Qadr worshipping Allah, you get that reward of 83 years of worship. And so this became our motivation to multiply our good deeds on that night so that it can be multiplied 83 years times over on the Day of Judgment. By the way, that's 83 years for every single Laylatul Qadr we catch. So if you spend 60 years of your life catching Laylatul Qadr every single year, that's 83 times 60 for how many years of worship you get the reward for. And this is Allah's fadl and mercy and, and rahmah to us, that He wants us to get that much reward. So He has given us these opportunities to earn that much reward. Now the one question that comes up about Laylatul Qadr that many people ask is, why did Allah not give us a specific date? Why did He not give us a specific date? We know most people say 27th, but some say 21st, some say any of the odd nights, some say any of the last 10 nights. Why is there no specific date? And in my opinion, one of the wisdoms behind why there is no specific date is that we spend all 10 nights in Ibadah. Because if you know that the 21st night is there for Qadr, the majority of Muslims will worship Allah on the 21st night and for the rest of Ramadan they'll forget about it. And we see this happening with some people, right? Some people, they will spend a night in Ibadah and the next day they will say that, you know, I think last night was late for God, I felt it. And then suddenly they are lax and lazy in their worship for the rest of Ramadan. Because they feel like they caught late for God. And that's, even, that's only when they feel like they caught it. Now imagine if they knew, if they knew for sure that this night is late for God. You will have people who will worship Allah on that night only and on no other night. And so Allah has a mercy to us to stop us from being lazy in our worship, to stop us from falling into this trap. He left it ambiguous. So we spend these entire last 10 nights in a marathon session of Ibadah. We spend these last 10 nights worshipping Allah, taking every single night as a possibility of being Laylatul Qadr. And so the surah ends with a sign of Laylatul Qadr. With a sign of Laylatul Qadr. Salam hiya hatta matla fajr. There is peace until the rising of the dawn. There is peace until the rising of the dawn. One of the clearest signs of Laylatul Qadr is it is a peaceful night. It is a night of a special level of peace. And anybody who in the past feels like they caught Laylatul Qadr, you know what I'm talking about. That there's that one night in the year, and sometimes it feels like the 27th, and sometimes it feels like the 23rd, and sometimes it feels like the 21st. I'm of the opinion that it changes every year, that Allah has kept it changing every year. He didn't set a specific date. But you just feel it on that one night, that there is a level of peace that you didn't feel all year round. And this peace is directly linked to what I forgot to mention, the Nazlul Malaika, that the angels and Waruh and Jibra'il, they descend on this night. Right? So I forgot to mention that verse. Allah subhanahu wa says one of the virtues of Laylatul Qadr is that the angels come down and Jibra'il comes down. And then he says there is peace until the rising of the dawn. So the ulama of Tafsir, they link these two verses together. They say one of the reasons why there is peace until the rising of the dawn is because the angels came down. That the angels bring with them the peace. And so because there are angels everywhere, there is peace all around us. And so this is a short tafsir of Surah Al-Qadr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to maximize our ibadah in these last few nights of Ramadan. May Allah allow us to catch Laylatul Al-Qadr and give us the reward of Laylatul Al-Qadr. Subhanahu rabbi al-izzati amma yasifun. Wassalamu ala mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillahi wahda wa salatu wa salamu ala man la nabiyya ba'da amma ba'd wa inna astaqal hadithi kitabullah wa khayru hadi hadi muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharru al-umuri muhtasatuha 
wa kullu muhdatsatin bid'a wa kullu bid'atin dalala wa kullu dalalatin fin nar amma ba'd When it comes to Laylatul Qadr people want to know what ibadah should I do And we know the best ibadah for this time is ittiqaf but unfortunately we are living in a time where we cannot make ittiqaf May Allah open the doors for us to do it next year or the year after by lifting for us from us this pandemic that we are facing But I would not recommend for anyone to do it this year for health and safety reasons. May Allah give us the reward for it for having the intention. But this year, it will be safer to be home. And may Allah allow us to perform itikaf in future. We know this is the best act of ibadah to do in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. But there are other acts of worship to do as well. To spend the night in dua, to spend the night in qiyamul layl, to spend the night in zikrullah. All of this is from what we should be doing on Layatul Qadr. And we have a hadith giving us a specific dua to make on this night. Because Aisha, radiallahu anha, she asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that if I catch Laylatul Qadr, what should I do? What should I ask Allah? If I catch it, meaning if I know in my heart tonight might be Laylatul Qadr, what should I ask Allah? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied to make the dua, Allahumma innaka fa'oo, innaka afoon to hibul afu fa'afu anni. Allahumma innaka afoon to hibul afu fa'afu anni. Oh Allah, you are the most pardoning. You love to pardon. You love to forgive. So forgive me. This is the dua of Layatul Qadr. This dua should be on our tongues every single night for the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And this goes back to a theme we mentioned at the very beginning of the month. At the beginning of the month, we said that Ramadan is the month of forgiveness. It is a time to earn forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us as sinners. And He knows we are sinners. And He knows we are weak. So He has given us opportunity upon opportunity to have our sins forgiven. And so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, From one Ramadan to the next is a means of forgiveness for everything in between except for the major sins. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever spends Ramadan in, in fasting for the sake of Allah, their sins will be forgiven. Whoever spends the nights of Ramadan in prayer for the sake of Allah, their sins will be forgiven. Whoever spends Laylatul Qadr in the worship of Allah, their sins will be forgiven. These are all mentioned in authentic hadiths. And so this is a month of seeking forgiveness. Many people enter this month thinking, I am too big a sinner. Many people enter this month thinking, my sins are too many, Allah can't forgive me. Many people enter this month thinking that how am I supposed to worship Allah with all of this filth and all of the sins I have committed? I say this month is for each and every one of us. This month was created for the sinner. It was created to give everybody a second chance. It was created to give everybody a sense of hope. It was created to give everybody a clean slate, a restart on life. Because if we spend these last 10 nights in ibadah, we can have all our sins forgiven. And the best ibadah to do in these last 10 nights is to ask Allah for forgiveness. And this is why the dua that the Prophet ﷺ recommended to us to make on these last two nights, these last 10 nights is, Oh Allah, you are the one who forgives and loves to forgive. So forgive me. We can break down this dua and it is so, so beautiful. Allah, you are forgiving in your nature. Right, the word used here is a name of Allah, Al-Afu, the one who loves to forgive, the one who is forgiving by his nature, the one who overlooks. And by the way, Afu is not the same as Ghafur. Ghafur means Allah has forgiven your sin. Afu means Allah has completely wiped it out. Like it didn't happen. It didn't happen. That's what it is. It's on a higher level. Not only is Allah by his nature forgiving, but to Hibbul Afu. Allah loves to forgive. And we have to have this paradigm shift. We have to have this shift in our mentality. One of the biggest problems of our community is that we portray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a God who loves to punish. But the Prophet sallallahu has described Allah as to hibul up, he loves to forgive. So if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has told us Allah is the one who loves to forgive, that is the belief we must raise our children upon. That is the belief that we should be teaching each other. That Allah loves to forgive, so seek his forgiveness. Seek his forgiveness every single day because he loves to forgive. And we ask Allah in this month of Ramadan. And we ask Allah every night for the next 
few nights until Ramadan is over for the remaining 13 or 14 nights that we have left, we ask Allah to forgive our sins and accept our acts of ibadah. Allahumma inna kafoon to hibul afu ba'fu anna. Allahumma inna kafoon to hibul afu ba'fu anna. Allahumma inna kafoon to hibul afu ba'fu anna. Rabbana la tu'ahizna inna sina u waqta'na. Rabbana wa la tahmil alayna isran kama hamaltahu ala alladheena min qablina. Rabbana wa la tuhammilna ma la taqada lana bi wa'fu anna. Waghfir lana warhamna anta maulana fansurna ala qawmil kafirin. Subahana rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wassalamu ala rabbil salim. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Aqimis salah.